Roll for Initiative, Chapter 3, by Prack. Identity Crisis. Before we begin tonight's game, there are a couple of things I want to talk about. Twice as he plastered out the character sheets. First of all, I'm making a little change on how I give out experience points. From now on, you get bonus XP for good role-playing. That's certainly generous if you're dying, Rarity said. I feel like I've been stuck at level 9 for ages. The others nodded in the intent of their agreement, but Twilight held up a hoof to interrupt them. Actually, if you keep playing the same way you've been doing it, some of you won't be getting any bonuses at all. The only one who's been making an effort to roleplay properly at all is Rainbow Dash. I'll get what you're saying, Twilight, said Applejack. Indeed, I'm afraid I don't understand your consent either, Severity. You just need to make your characters act less like your real selves. You're playing a role, not inserting yourself into a different coat. Try to give their characters your own unique personalities. <sighs> Isn't that always the way? Sometimes you've got to remind some of these people who are playing the game that this is a role-playing game, not just a game. And you need to actually get them to play. I actually have that type of problem with one of my players. He keeps wanting to let the DM do all the work. Oh, I get Piggy is saying, so instead of acting like me, I should not act like me when I'm acting like Squirrely, because even though Squirrely is me, she's not supposed to be me, and I'm not really... Pike Guy. The other five yelling at him, along with Spike, was settled in the corner to read the latest comics while the mayors played their game. That's right, Pinky, Twilight said. Y'all just need to try to develop unique personality characteristics for each of your characters. Now, the other thing I want to bring up was matter of snacks. I don't know if anybody else noticed, but not all of us got our fair share last week. Seriously? Rainbow Dash deadpan. Yes, Rainbow, I'm serious, Twilight said. Support pull out our books, dice, and papers out of a small box. What, you can't popcorn curls or something? A piece of paper hovered out of Twilight's box. It was a fellow to six columns, with each point's queuing mark at the top. As a matter of fact, I forget I asked! Said Rainbow, her voice muffled by her hoof pressed to her face. Twilight grins were passed on. As I was saying, before you all arrived, I counted the TCH chips in the bowl. There are exactly 37 for each of us. Why you all keep count and not to go over that limit? She so was answered by silence of five blank stares. Twilight? Flares I said after a long pause. Yes? Wouldn't it make more sense for us to bring extra snacks? Oh, I guess it would. After faltering for a moment, Twilight quickly recovered. But for tonight, we only have one bowl of snacks, so we need to ration it out. Starting next week, we can all bring something. Before the others could reply, Twilight loaded her screen into place and opened her books. Now, let's get started. After your last adventure, you've been sowing some downtime in the newly constructed Temple of Trixie. Having been presented at the ascension of the new deity, you have been acknowledged as prophets and are treated with special honors. As the new day dawns, you are easily wakened by a knock on your door. I get up and answer it, Rainbow said quickly. No, you don't. Rainbow leaned in, star staring at Twilight in their eyes. Why not? Twilight met her gaze, but Carol pointed down as the scowl of smirk. Because your new character hasn't been introduced yet. Rainbow blinked. Breaking the eye contact, Rita teared to her seat. Oh, right, she muttered. Anyway, as the first rays of sunlight peeked through the open door, Squirrely Sparks was really awakened by a knock on her door. I hear ya! She said gruffly as she climbed out of bed. Using her magic, she ran out of breath through her mane. It was had changed from pink to orange overnight. It put on her purple cloak. Finally, she reached out with her magic and opened the door. We're feeling one of the younger acolytes, a tippy blue coat with a pair of scissors for a king mark. Good morning, you prophetlessness. What you want? Sorely snapped, scowling at each other. The cult backed away from the door slowly. Uh, didn't wake up, Miss Sparks? I like up when I choose his legs up. You hears me, you little brat? What? Pinky said in response to the stairs he was getting from all sides. He said not to act like me. But Swirly has an Intel score of 19, said Twilight. She needs to sound appropriately smart. Again, 
some people need to learn that the, when we say tabletop RPG, we're referring to the role-playing part of the game as well. Pinky leaned back across her four legs. How do you know someone with 19 intelligence wouldn't still talk like that? Do you have 19 intelligence? Pinky, I don't have an intelligence score at all! Twice why shied. So he slammed a hoof on the table to emphasize the point, causing your screen to fall over. Matt took it back into place, but in a split second it blocked her fist and Pinky disappeared. You really seem to be so hard on yourself, Pinky said from beside Twilight, throwing for a leg over her withers. You're the smartest pony I know. I say your scar is at least a 12, meaning a 13. How did you- Forget it! Get back to the game! As the first rays of sunlight peeked through her open window, Lighthouse's meditation was interrupted by a knock on the door. I enter. She did not turn to look, but the hoof falls were light, indicating a young filly or cult. As he stood up, as the young Trixie and Acolyte nervously approached, the rising sun's light reflected off her armor, casting a golden glow around the room. As he turned around to find a lanky unicorn cult with an amber coat. More snails, these are sugar cube. Pardon me, Miss Prophetess, who doesn't sound like a paladin, but did you hear my name? Did you receive a divine message from our magnificent goddess, the great and powerful Trixie? Have I mentioned I still hate you for that? said Rainbow. <laughs> Don't blame me, said Twilight. Blame your dice. Yeah, of course. Please do pardon me, Lighthouse said, suddenly using a much more elegant accent, reminiscent of Big City Elite. I've never heard your name before. I'm merely pleased to record your cue mark. But my curie mark is a falcon, not a snail. I hate you, Twilight. Applesack snarled. Twilight only granted a response. Behind the screens, he erased a crudely drawn snail from the flank of an equally drawn cult and replaced it with an ugly bird. Now, which of you is next? Applejack, don't mess with the DM. This will lead to pain and suffering and wrath die. As the first rays of sunlight peeked through its open window, Crescent was awakened by the sound of birds chirping. It was sitting on a branch outside, trilling happily. The huge stallion got out of bed, walked over to the closet, where his terrorist chitlin armor had been set on the floor beside his battle axe. The bird continued to skink as he put as he put on his gear. Before leaving the room, he walked over to the window and stared out at the beautiful innocent creature, which seemed to be performing a lovely song for his ears. Rawr! He roared, startling the bird taking flight. In the hallway, a small host stopped just started knocking the door, and the act like slowly backed away. The table went completely silent. Even Spike looked up from his comic was staring. Fluttershy looked at the confused faces around her, and with each one, she shrank a little more. I didn't see that coming. Nice job, Fluttershy, said Twilight, and super a smile playing on her face. I feel dirty. As the first rays of sunlight peeked through her open window, Noble Jem yawned and stretched, though she would have preferred to stay in bed a little longer, an assistant knocking on the door that took the possibility off the table. With a gentle sigh, she put on her slippers and opened the door. The sight of a young priestess in alkalite rose, as blue as all the others, but lacking the brightest stars on the rose of the full butterfly's clergy, greeted her on the other side. Bowing to Philly, said, Good morning, Prophetess Noble Jem. Noble Jim rolled her eyes and suggested, Morning, kid. You hear first story, a song. Or you're just here to come down to breakfast. Just breakfast, I'm afraid, my lady. That would be lovely. I'm positively famished, Noble Jim said. All your friends got a moment later. Let's hide that gate. I'm really hungry. Excellent. Please follow me downstairs. The village church as he set off the trot. Twilight, please tell me a good we give that little slip. Rarity said, getting into an unfamiliar character, as difficult to say the least. Well, yeah, no kidding, Applesack said. I don't use that fancy accent since I was a blank fake filler. Hey, do I get to join in suit or what? Rainbow asked. Yes, Dash, you'll join the game in just a moment. Why well, said, now, you all enter the dining hall at the same time. You claim me? No! Twice shied. Just wait a minute, you're all sitting at a long table. Four of the tables were occupied by acolytes and guests of the temple, but the fifth was reserved specifically for ordained priests and ordained guests, such as Trixie's prophets. 
The meal was placed in front of them was simple. Oatmeal, hay, and water. But the oatmeal was warm, and the water was clean thanks to the clerics' purification spells. The four warriors all scowled during the prayer. A great and glorious goddess of might, luck, and eating, really questionable objects, we beseech you during our blessings upon our humble meal, as that our power be granted to us through Celestia's day. We may go forth from this place in your name, and oppose all that is evil, wear sacky clothing, and use this the most untwisting of devices, the wheels. Out of the prayer, the priest stood up, as he had been in Tracy's service no longer than any of the others. But he had been chosen by far as powerful mean. The oldest priest compared their ages, backgrounds, and powers. When that failed to reveal the strongest candidate, they settled in a time hard since last week to visit a Tracy and Clarity by rolling dice. Fellow disciples of all my guys, visitors, and honored guests, I'm pleased to announce the arrival of another illustrious guest to our humble temple. He says he just around the opulent room. Integrate tapestries adorned the walls, golden chandeliers hung from the ceilings, and tables were half carved from mahogany, polished to a mirror like finish. Stained glass windows were just painted Trixie's grace feet. Some real, some embellished, some made up on the spot. You are having way too much fun with this Trixie thing, Twilight, Rainbow said. I must agree, Rarity said. The novelty has begun to wear thin. Fine. Twilight huffed. Rainbow, I'll introduce your character now. Who's it gonna be? Lightning Dust? Derpy? Maybe Yilda? Nope. I need one up this time. Rainbow's smug express and melted as she noticed her friends' lack of responses and their disbelieving stares. What? You made a completely original character, said Twilight. Rainbow Dash stood up and spread her wings offensively. Yeah, I did. What of it? It's well, that's all I expect to cure. Sugar Cube, said Applejack. Rarity died. Yes, I was certain you were going to get back to Daring 2 after your last experience. Well, excuse me for trying something new! Rainbow growls before plopping back down on the table. Now, do you want to hear about my character or not? Okay, Rainbow, Twice said. I'll introduce your character. Then you can describe her for every pony. Assuming it is a mayor, of course. The high priest finished the round for words as he tried to remember. Um, Stained glass windows, tables, tapestries, satellites, no wait, I didn't see anything about those around. Oh yes, may I present a new guest, the master rogue known as... STOP! Rainbow said, holding up a hoof for emphasis. What is it now? Twilight said, growling. I now rock. What? But you told me! Twilight's magic gripped Rainbow's character sheet. The rainbow held a hoof on top of it, keep it from moving. I know, I changed my mind. Now what's your new character now? Twilight asked as she released the sea of paper. A cleric! Gotta say, that's a surprise. Never figured you for a cleric, Applejack said. Rainbow turned towards Applejack, but found her fist full of Pinky's muscle. You're dancing, Pinky said. You mean a cleric so I can make a cupcake batter out of maple syrup? But maple syrup is delicious, so your cleric must be delicious too! I hope I get a taste before I'm on the monsters. <laughs> Rarity gave Pinky the useful response of raising an eyebrow and not thinking too deeply about what she said. Then chimed in with her own feelings about Rainbow's new character. I must say, I could tell I could set me an odd choice for you. I have every confidence in your ability to break the game, or at least not drag us all down when you get killed, so I'm fine with it. What I saw he expressed it to get tears in was a meek, oh my. See, why they're cool with it, Sorry. Rainbow turned back to the dungeon master, finding her wide-eyed, frantically rough with her papers. What's wrong? What's wrong is that I thought you were going to be a rogue again, so I decided these games challenges to a party having won. There's no point to pick clocks to disarm traps. There's no way you could possibly win! A thoughtful silence is set on our table, only to be broken by the occasional turn of a comic page. In the car, the crunchy sound of a cheesy hay chip being eaten, scratching a twilight's quill as he recorded who had eaten it, as Rainbow finally spoke. I think I have an idea. I'll need your help, Fluttershy. Rather, I'll eat Cresser's help. What do you mean? Fluttershy said. Rainbow leaned in close and whispered in ear. Fluttershy's eyes opened wide as she said, Oh, no, 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 no. I couldn't possibly do that. Trust me, it'll be awesome. If we don't do this, the whole game could be ruined because of how long it would take me to make a new rogue for scraps. Well, yes, but... Fluttershy hesitated. After closing her eyes and taking a deep breath, she said, Okay, I'll do it. 
Game more Twilight, Remo exclaimed. He just be as a cleric and watch us be awesome. Uh, guess you guys excuse me a second. I need to check a spell book. Ha! Jokes on you, Twilight. Find Traps is a second level cleric spell in 3.5. Don't know about 4th edition, but, uh, 4th edition could go fire or die in a fire. Huh, excuse me. I meant to say the cleric known as. Holy Roller, at your service, my children. The interesting came from a brown coated earth pony mare, a bright yellow mane, who went to the high priest. Holy Roller, are you serious? The high priest called to start over. I mean, welcome to the magnificent humble temple of a beloved goddess. Please join us for breakfast. You can sit with these four adventurers, who you never met before, but sit by with quickly enough to go questing with them. As he sat down, the priestess nodded to the others. Hello, my children. I am a holy roller, a cleric of the order of the celestial light. Greetings, sister holy. I'm La Hoes, a pal in the order light. I'm number Jim, a bard. Calls me slowly, halflinks. I'm be a mighty sorceress with a bad attitude. Me, Crusher. Crusher get mad, bad hit things. Crusher happy to meet you. Holy roller greeted her new friends at breakfast, placed on a table. Why, it's just as the high priest said. I feel an instant connection with you fine adventurers. I desire to go quest on you. The quintet entered the high priest's office. He stood with his back to them, staring through his window at the snow-capped peaks of problematic mountains, which appeared at the edge of the horizon, telling about the treetops of the forest of constant danger. What do you want with us, pups? Sorry said. Lyho smacked the back of her head as the priest turned around. Swirl it. I have no way to talk to our host. It's Crow right, little paladin, said High Priest. I'll call you all here on a matter of grave points. There's a storm gathered to the east. You should call a Pegasus for that, Pops. Leaning on the weather patrol, Sorrel grumbled. The High Priest sighed and shook his head. A metaphorical storm. They gets the metaphorical? We're planning to do it. Pardon me for interrupting, Squirrely, Holy Roller said patiently. But I believe that the High Priest is simply saying that there are troubles in which the land must be addressed. Exactly, the High Priestess said uh, correctly. Kind of sort of attempt to reply. Now, the quest I'm hoping you'll all agree to take is a journey to the Lost Tome. You ready, hey? Sora's remark was mercifully cut so, as Noble Gem jumped a hoof into her mouth. I was this tome, said Noble Gem. East, the high priest answered. No one stayed silent for a few more seconds, but when the high priest didn't say anything else, he spoke up again. Could you be in a more specific? No. Noble's eyes twitched. Why not? The high priest shrugged and said, I don't know because it's lost to him after all. As the other side, Laiho stepped forward. Grace, we well, must have really been given more to work with than a lost temple to the east. Does he tell us, Titanelli? Nope, lost. Crusher think you're holding out on us. Make Crusher happy or Crusher can get mad and break head. A large black pony loomed over the high priest. I can't believe you succeeded in picking up his hidden motive, Twice said. Let's see if you can't intimidate him to tell you more. Flesh I rolled a die again. Is twenty four enough? Twice rolled a die behind your screen. Yeah, they'll do it. The high priest tells you about Leslie he once heard. In the legend, Clover the Clever defeated an army of griffins and minotaurs by freezing them in a prison on a secret tomb. While he doesn't know exactly where the tomb is, he thinks he should be able to find it by following the cold wind blowing in from the east. Why were you trying to hide that from us? Asked Fluttershy. Good question, Twilight said. You'll have to find the answer later, though. After several days of traveling through grasslands, Denny swiftly transformed to a tundra. Five adventurers arrived at a gaping entrance to a long forgotten tomb. The rubble around the area suggested it was recently blown up in from the inside. Holy Roller stepped into the icy gale, blowing from deep within the tomb. She stepped back a moment later, shivering and fro covered in frost. So early, my child, we all appreciate greatly if you help with this. Once I swirled fired up her horn and cast an enchantment across the entire pie. In an instant, all the snow and ice clinging down evaporated. You happy now, Volley Polly? That's better. After you, my dear fellow. 
holding motion for Crusher to take the lead. Oh, wait a moment. Double Jones said, stepping in front of Crusher. And there might be traps. I should go first. I may not be as good as a real rogue, but I might be able to spot a few. No, a lot of Crusher displays versatility. Crusher, Holy Roller, Karen. As Crusher stepped around the barn, Holy fell in line behind the barbarian, keeping a generous tristness. As the others followed closer behind her, a click announced the first trap across her heavy foot, pressing a sealed switch. While the arrows watched from behind, a rain of arrows rained down upon from all sides. But Marmorite right, entered after a few seconds, and the barbarian turned to face the rest of the party. Found trap. You can't be serious, Twilight said. Rarity tilted her head to get a few foot of flutter sigh. It was blessing furiously, and a green rainbow dash. That's completely insane! What were you thinking? I was very smart and leaned in closer to the others. Wait a second, y'all. I feel like I get it. How much damage did you just take? Three. Fleshside whispered. That's it! Shouted the rest of them. My ace rainbow and Able Jack. Yeah, that's right. I'm a genius. Rainbow flapped her wings to get into the air, strike a pose. But the sun cuss blew the character sheets off the table. She read the back of her head and laughed awkwardly as she floated down. Oops, sorry. So much for all that selling us, Hooli. Applejack grumbled as he picked up the papers near her. Twilight so cleared her throat as he picked her screen up from the floor and levitated back into place. Anyway, you still have another problem to work out. Maybe you could get through the traps, but you still don't have a way to get through locked doors. And guess what? After you get past the other trap, there's one right in front of you. Darling, I think we have more than enough options. It's called a lock knock spell, Twilight. I don't think I can attempt to pick locks. Even if I fail, Piggy could cast an unlocking spell. Piggy, do you have that spell? That's why. Nubby nubby! Piggy says she pots cheesy hate over to her mouth. Twice smart as she turned her attention to Rarity. And do you happen to have a set of thieving tools? Uh, no. And then I guess you're stuck? Twilight leaned back and stuck her nose in the air like a Carolot noble. Your only choices are to go back, have Rainbow re-roll a rogue, or rest for eight hours so swirly can memorize that spell. A child chuckled prior head back down. What is it now, Rainbow? You don't get it, do you, Twilight? We have a rogue with an awesome lockpick, Rainbow said, though she was gray, her brow furrowed, her eyes narrowed. No, I'm absolutely certain none of you took a level a rogue, Twilight replied. First, I spoke out demon, but she smiled as he said, Crush your rogue. Crush your have lockpick. You wouldn't. Twilight never second guessed the min maxing multi classing pe Pegasi. A feral Crusher has his double aged lockpick into the door, splintering the heavy wood. He smiles as he observed the handiwork momentarily, then stepped through the opening into the chamber beyond. As the rest of the party followed, Noble Gem noticed that the lock's mechanism was still in place, held up by a thin wire, while stretched time appeared to be near its breaking points. Oops! We missed the trap! It cleared defiance of the will of fate, when it tended to will of the trap to go off his holy roller pass. She popped the mechanism loose on a bit of wood, before waving the last of her friends through. In a darker room, they found themselves in was large enough for the sounds of their voices and host steps to echo in the distance. Once their torches was lit, it became clear that the room was circular with a high ceiling. Most of the floor space was occupied by a large pool of murky wire. Despite the freezing cold, it was not frozen. However, the surface was still a pane of glass. Lighthouse reached out to touch the pool, but Noble Jim slept her hoof away. Don't disturb the water! I don't see what you're concerned about, Lighthouse said. Though you fear some monstrosity within may be watching us, prepare to grab any pony who breaks the surface with his massive tentacles. Noble shrugged. I see, I haven't thought about it. I just think it's pity. Well, I think we should go for a swim. So I said, and if there's something in there to fight, we should hurry up and do it. Crusher preferred not to fight. Crusher wanted to leave. I don't think we got a choice, Crusher. You see that door over there? Slowly asked, Crusher nodded. It's got four locks, and you can add four plates. If we stand up, whatever's in that wire will wake up. For a great time with the others, Holy Roller shook her head aside. Sorely, please, for the sake of every point, Sandy, stop speaking. 
So he has a point there, Noble Sam said. There are really four points around the hole. We've really got to stand and lock that door. She so probably went gently over the hoof, causing it to move slightly. The four circular plates were evenly placed around the circumference of the pool, each one wide enough to accommodate a single pony. Directly across from where the party had entered, a heavy stone door barred their path. I guess this seems easy enough, mused the lighthouse, but still leaves one of us account for. What's the last one made to do while every pony else stands on the switches? What makes you think there's anything for a fifth pony to do? asked Twilight. Rainbow scoffed. Give it a rest, Fly. If there's five of us, that does this gotta be designed, so we're all needed. <sighs> Fine. Twilight rolled a few dice behind her screen. Piggy, you notice the switch behind the stone door. It has four colors jewels set in the wall next to it. What's nearly blended with the rocky surface. Hey, you guys, I just seen... She fills you on what she just saw, Twilight yelled. Pinky held a crayon a hoof full of chips into her mouth. Up next, she had the hoof on the table picked up her D20. Okay, y'all, I'll work it down with pulling up to see what's going to happen. My house was the first to step onto a pressure plate. It gave way under her heavy weight, sinking about an inch into a place a loud click on the far wall. One of the jewels beside the sticks sparked the life and shone with golden light. So far, so good. Said Lighthouse. Before any pony else steps on one, we need to set their strategy. What should the worst happen? As the other ponies approached the paladin, Noble Jim asked, What's the plan? I believe it's likely when the four switches are pressed, the chamber's guardian will appear, Light said, mostly around the room, pointing to each of the pressure plates. Considering the size of this pool, it could be extremely large. As the rest nodded, Holy Roller spoke up. Yes, my sister and Celestia is like, you probably are correct. Also, we may need to hold our persistence during the bell. So, Lincoln's fire needs to be the one that draws the switch, said so Swirly. I exactly, Swirly, Noble said. One of the most likely to be killed should be the one that throws the switch. Wait, why are you looking at me? Crusher can't monster with axe. Light used sword. Swirly used magic. Holly had magic and mace, the barbarian pointed out. Far no need to break new loot on a monster like last one. Noble sighed. You're never gonna let me forget that, are you? Nope! They all answered together. Fine! Noble Jen says he slick off towards the wall switch. Crusher took up a possessor on presser plate to Lighthouse right, on the others to access the ones closer to the exit. The Crusher's right, squirrelly stomped up to the next floor switch, leaving the final one for Holy Roller. The others in persistent, all four lights began to gl glowing. Noble pulled down on it. It stopped halfway. The four trembled beneath their hooves as a loud thunk issued from the depths. The strategy of the wire surface marred by ripples, followed by bubbles as the wire seemed to boil. Switch will go down all the way! Noble yelled, I can't open the door! I'll come help! Holy Roller said, What's going on here? I can't move my hooves! The night plates are magnetized! Lighthouse yelled as he tried to sit her legs. Our horse users stick to him! Noble lifted her legs experimentally. I'm sifting over here. Glad to hear it, sleep flanks. I'm gonna need you to free your health fight this thing! At that moment, a huge head broke the surface of the wire. It looked vaguely like a pony, but instead of a fur coat, it was covered in green, oily scales. In place of a mane, in spiked fins stood straight up. His teeth were as sharp as knives, and his eyes, each the size of a regular pony, were the color of blood. As it emerged further, its lower half became visible. Octopus like tentacles splayed out across the room, large as one attached itself to the floor, while the rest were heading menacingly in the air. Swirly fired the first shot, striking the beast of gob of acid. He had to point retaliate by slamming one of his tentacles down on the floor. The same aim for Swirly, it sagged slightly to her side. Noble Tim nearly avoided his blow. Can't reach its body, Lighthouse said. They attack the tentacles! Holy Roller got her back. In her advice, the paladin slashed deeply into the monster's nearest appendage. A tentacle was was fastened securely to the ground beside her. The creature briefly roared in response. The renewed his crying when Holy Roller also struck a tentacle. Hey, I just realized something, Rainbow said. I don't like hearing it if our hoes are still attached to the floor. So I raised an eyebrow. Hmm, huh, that's a good point. Twilight so raised the hook to her chin, humming softly while she muttered over. Maybe you're holding weapons in your mouth? The hell are you talking? Sighing, Twilight shook her head. Magic. Seriously, 
You can't think of a better, anything better than that, asked Karen. Would you prefer to say that you have an experienced tongue? Magic it is. Despite the other attacks, the Beast Gates was still locked to the barred. An attempt to transfer his attention to somebody else, she ran towards Crusher. As you see Finn's moving, her glutes music filled the air. Crusher's first part hacked at a tackle, so I focused her attention on the same one, firing a bolt of crimson energy at the axe wound. Despite the damage done by the others, the Octopony turned once more to face the noble gem and slapped her again. The blow knocked her to the floor, flat on her belly. Then tackle curled up to grip her. She rolled to the side, however, narrowly avoiding it. I thought I was supposed to be SAFE! She yelled. Like host of Holy Roller continued to strike it. But instead of joining the attack, Double Tim ran around the room once more, took up a sister on the opposite side, next to the cleric. Crusher very angry, muttered the barbarian. Crusher smells ugly thing. Once more, his axe cut deeply into the enormous tackle beside him. The next shot for Sword's horn finished the job. The tackle was completely severed, and the monster's grip on the floor weakened causing it to dip slightly into the wire. Great job, big guy! Holy Roller shouted. As he yelled, the monster turned to his direction. Uh-oh. A quick swipe from one of the smaller appendices knocked her down, but due to her hose being fastened to the floor, she involuntarily sprang right back into standing position. The same blow sent Noble down reeling again. The paladin struck the closest target once again. But the cleric prepared to do the same. She was stuck by the bard. Wait! I'm badly hurt! I might not survive another hit! Oh, all right, Holy Warrior said. So attacking, she cast a healing spell to restore most of Noble Jim's lost vitality. The bard immediately picked herself up and sprang around the room again, okay. stopping between him and Crusher and Squirrely. Wait a minute, said Squirrely as he watched Crusher take a swing, but missed due to the monster's main body being out of reach. I got an idea. It's chasing after Noble Jim, so if I make her invincible, it might stop attacking. Do it! The others confirmed. Good thing I thought I might need to spell. Yep, it's he! Heads up! Swirly's horns flared, causing Noble to vanish. Reaction for the beast was immediate. It brought to its head all the way around the room, searching for Noble. When he got to find her, it released its tackles from the floor, one at a time, tested them higher in a wall, lifting his bulk out of the wire completely. What a tornation? Light exclaimed. Like, why is it climbing? High above their heads, well inside the range of their weapons, the octopi came to a stop. So is he gonna stay up there? Why you no attack? No one said his voice came from somewhere near Crank Cluster. I don't understand either. Once he spoke, the monster shifted slightly. Is it opening out to me? It moved again. Light turned to the sorceress. Sorely, can you take the invisibility out to her? Nope! Once it she disappears, I can't bring her back. The spell needs to wear off on its own. It'll just take a minute or two. I was tackling back and stretched her neck. I reckon we should take a minute to strategize. Sounds good, Rainbow said. Ready to tap perfectly on the table with one of her hosts as she thought about it. It seems to me that hawking away tentacles will actually kill the octopony. You were trying to kill it? I was thinking. I think we were just trying to drop it back in the wire so it hits the last pressure plate and let us open the door. As the arrow stared at her, Pinky pulled a pin from her mate and dropped it to the floor. I really did hear it! Pinky. Twice spoke slowly, slowly announcing every syllable in front of the locks of hair popped up. <sighs> Twilight? I think you've encountered one of the main problems of being a DM. You can plan and plan and plan, but you'll never be smart enough to outsmart the quick thinking of your players. How many questions did you know about that last plate? No point spotted that yet. Just a hunch. The other point suddenly regrets his grips on the wall and fell back down. In one quick moment, it hits Whirly's head off. Then began using his tackles to powder. <laughs> the powder remains at the paste. Twilight, you can't wrap her like that. Okay, fine. That didn't really happen. Twilight brushed her mate back into place as she struggled off the six Bermuda stairs directed at her. The fight's still ruined, though. It'll be fine, Sugar Cube, Alpsack said. That was really changed when we were focusing on the tentacles anyway. Now we just know what will happen when we win. Twilight sighed and shook her head before Play did scream back into place. Okay, let's get back to it for real. 
the moment the invisibility spell wore off, the octopi descended again. Its new position put the three remaining anchor tackles beside Crusher, Holy Roller, and Light Hose. Combat immediately resumed. Rest of the battle, passing a blur as Light and Crusher hacked away into the tentacles closer to them while Squirrelly destroyed one near Holy. Noble Tim continued to run away, never allowing the beast to corner her. Holy Roller's efforts were focused on keeping the bard healed. At last, the final tackle was severed, and got the point fell down in the water, nearly sinking down to the pool and landing on the final presser plate. Noble Jam runs to the exit and threw the switch. The door shuttered and slid open. The sound of grinding glocks exhaling the ears of all the adventurers. Founder and host released from the magnetic grip. Crusher led the way as the party entered the corridor. Half laid down it, something clicked under one of his hooves, and he found himself bathed in flames as spears were flung from holes in the wall. A quick splash of conjured wire extinguished his mane. The damage from the spears was hailed by holy water's sleek as spell. At the end of the passage, the party found another one door. Crusher pick locked. Twilight groaned. Forget it! Let's just say this one's not even locked! <sighs> you know, there are days when I wonder. Who is the real greatest villain of all of D&D? Tiamat? No. Vecna? No. Asmodeus? No. It's a door. A freaking door. So many D&D parties have been stopped by a mother fracking door. When one of the greatest parties of all time, of all actual play, cannot get past a door, you know we got problems, man! Crash just smashed the door anyway. As the party stepped into the next room, they immediately noticed the walls were all frozen over, and the floor was covered in two inches of snow. In the center of the chamber, upon the throne of ice, sat an ethereal horse with a crystalline crown on top of his head, the king of the Wendigos. And we're going to leave it on a cliffhanger this time, Twilight said. Rainbow jumped over and yelled, Wait, are you serious? Twilight pointed the clock on the wall. Look at the time. It's after midnight. Oh. Oh, shucks. Elpsack says he stood up and stretched. I gotta back back to the farm and get some sleep. I said, I already in bed. Why does I scramble to clear away her hair in a mess? And I need to feed the nocturnal critters before I go to bed. I'm already late. I hope they're not angry with me. And this, people, is why Fluttershy being scared of the dark makes no sense. She has nocturnal animals. Thank you. As soon as the books and papers were packed away and the clutter had been picked up, I was hastened home. Twa Spike! Twilight said, take a letter. The young dragon immediately put his collar down and picked up a scroll and quill. What is that, sister? Luna asked as he watched in Celestia's room. Celestia was sitting on a cushion beside her bed, poring over a scroll. It's a letter from Twilight. She was just telling me about a game she's been playing with her friends, and the lessons she's learned about friendship because of it. Luna sat down beside Celestia. What sort of game? I'm not entirely sure, but they've been playing every Sunday night for over a, Saturday night for over a month. It's something called an RPG. It apparently involves using dice to fight monsters. I don't really understand it. Celestia glanced over at her sister, found her grinning like a mad mare. Luna hopped up onto her hose and bounded to the door. Where are you going? To get to my dice! So, years passed. I graduated high school and I went to college. And of course, we did all the things that college students did. I sat down, tried to work. Sadly, much like how Twilight tried to focus on one thing and not get involved with friends, I eventually got involved with friends, playing games, playing Smash, all sorts of fun. However, one day, one Friday, after I was done with my math class, I saw a group of guys playing a game. I went over and saw they were playing Dungeons and Dragons, third 3.5 edition. Now, admittedly, I was still shy and never really felt like people really wanted me there or 
felt like nobody really liked having me anywhere, and I still felt like nobody really wanted me. So I was a little nervous actually asking if I could watch. But I did, and the guy said sure. So I sat down and watched some play. I started listening to the rules, and it wasn't long after I asked, Can I join? And thus, my character creation began. <laughs>